Welcome to another episode of Michael's Corner. I'm standing by with Aaron Corbin. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, Michael. How are you doing, buddy? Good. So, so for those of you guys who don't know, last month, I believe, I have posted a poll on my Facebook fan page, Michael Mo, And I asked, who do you guys want me to interview next, you know? Y'all, you guys wanted me to pick Aaron Corbin. So he won the votes. So, you got what you want. So Aaron, my first question to you is this. How the hell did you get into the wrestling business? <laughs> so I've been a fan of wrestling since I can remember being in diapers. And when I went to high school, I heard about a wrestling company. And I went to my friend's friend's farm, and it was a bunch of hay bales with tarp over it, and they made ropes out of tractor wire. And I was like, well, that's cool. So we went out there, and they were like, yeah, just hop in here and wrestle with us. So I did some stuff and kind of hung out with them, and then we all saved up money and went in together and bought a ring. And from there, I had met a couple guys, and you'll get a kick out of this. I had met a couple guys up in Minnesota, and the first one I met was Shim Dog. Oh, for those guys who don't know who Shim Dog is, Shim Dog is Shane Lockhart. Yep. So I met him, and I started wrestling up in Albert Lee, Minnesota. And then we went to a show in Fairbolt. And I could tell that these guys were on a different level of wrestling than I was. And they told me about a wrestling school. So I went to the wrestling school. It was called MPW. The trainers were Sheriff, Shifty, and Eric Cannon. And that's when I started actually training to really wrestle. And I've been doing it ever since. Okay, so my next question to you is, who was your toughest opponent that you ever faced? It could be just name one. That is a tough one. I've got one in a couple different categories. Okay. One of the toughest guys to work because of how hard he hits is Mitch Paradise. When you wrestle Mitch Paradise, you know that you are not going to feel good Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And as far as other toughest, I would say Cody O'Neill because no one ever formed me harder than Cody O'Neill did because we're your best friends and you can hit your best friends harder than anybody. But also because he always challenged me to be creative and always brought the best out of me. There was never a night off with him. So I'd say those are my two toughest. Mm -hmm. So my next question to you, my friend, is what is your goal in any, any wrestling promotion? What is your goal? My goal when I get to a wrestling promotion is hands down to be the most hated guy on the show. And I don't want to be forgotten. My biggest fear in life is that no one will remember me. So I always try to make sure, like tonight, show, people always remember me going through that big board. I always want people to remember me for something. So that's my goal is to be the, to have those people so mad that they want to riot. And I actually started one once and that's pretty neat. Uh -huh. So my next question to you is this. Um, I think you and I have been, you and I have talked about this. And I don't know if this is true or not. I've been hearing that you, sir, are retiring soon. Is that true? I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way because I don't know if I can answer that honestly. I have never in my wrestling career been able to say that I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Do you know what I mean by that? I've never been able to like picture the idea that now I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And that doesn't mean I'm leaving the wrestling business. That might just mean my in-ring stuff because I am close to 40 years old. I've been doing this for 17 years and my body has just about had enough. I'll never leave wrestling, but I might leave the wrestling ring. Mm -hmm. So if that were the case, you know, what would your role will be, you know, outside of the ring? If that were like, you said, let's just say that you, you know, tonight was your last night, wrestling. Mm -hmm. What will your role be next? Do you want to be behind the scenes, or do you want to 
coach other people who's trying to get into the wrestling business? I mean, I would like to, in a perfect world, if I had infinite amount of money, I would start my own wrestling promotion and open up a wrestling school. I think, uh, I've never been the most athletic guy on the show, but more than anything, I know how to draw emotion out of people, and I think I can teach people that. If you were asking like my dream job, I would love to be a writer for AEW. Oh, wow. Did you hear that, AEW? He wants to be a writer one day. So, uh, my next question to you is this. It's going to be about PQ. Okay? Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. I know it's been so many years ago since he retired. Do you miss PQ, I mean, PQ, you know, retiring from the wrestling business? Do you miss him? And if he were to come back out of retirement, would you love to face him one, one more if that? So I absolutely miss Pete Huge. Me and Pete always have good respect for each other. Funny story, when I started wrestling, my wrestling name was Playboy Aaron Corbin. Oh, really? Well, who was Pete Huge? Playboy Pete Huge. So when I moved up here, I found out there was another guy named Playboy, but he had been around for longer, so I changed my name. But I still wish we would have had a Playboy versus Playboy match. Um, I've wrestled Pete a lot. As far as him coming back, would I like to wrestle him? My answer to that is no. And here's why. That's because I love Pete. He's had issues with concussions in the ring, and I personally don't ever want to see him wrestle again because I don't want anything bad to happen to Pete. So that's why I do not. If he was healthy, 100%, I'd love to wrestle him. But with the way he is now, and he's still involved with wrestling, I think he's doing some managing stuff like that. But as far as wrestling, I wouldn't want to risk him ever getting hurt. Okay. And and we talked about, you know, Shim Dog, you know. So, did you ever got a chance to wrestle with oh, him? Oh, my God. I've wrestled Shim Dog Shane Lockhart about a hundred times. And one of the times I wrestled Shim Dog, we were in the ring and I had him in a headlock. And I told him a joke. And he laughed so hard he pissed himself. <laughs> My goal every time I wrestled Shane was to make him laugh and break character. And I usually did a pretty good job. We had a bunch of inside jokes we would do. And every time he wrestled Shane, the worst part of wrestling Shane is his gear stinks. It's terrible. When he does that thing where he sits over your head and does that thing. Oh, my lord. Those tights. Mm-mm. But I love Shane. Yeah, um, yeah, we and and I like Shane Lockhart too. Um, and I don't know if you know this or not, but um, I did talk to his. Um, you know his wife, Erin. Yes, you know? very well. I talked with her. I don't know how long ago it was, but she was. She told me that um, Shane Lockhart actually retired. I think he retired from wrestling last year because I think she told me that he had so many concussions that... So last, I, I will show you a funny picture since we're talking about Shane. There is a wrestler around here. His name used to be Cowboy Gator McGraw. Okay. And he's friends with Shane on Facebook. And I'll show the camera before I show Michael. Shane plays rugby now in California with an old man rugby league. Look at that guy. Oh, look at him. Yep, Shane is very close to being 50 years old. Yes. I think he's 48 probably. So I absolutely love Shane. He was one of my best friends for a very long time. We don't talk as much anymore. Um, it's one of those things that if I were to run into him tomorrow, we'd pick up from right where we left off. And my best memories of Shane, we used to hop in a car and flip a coin for what direction we were going to drive, and we would take off. Mm -hmm. No heads, let's go north, and we would take off. We spent an entire weekend in an arcade in Wisconsin one time, just because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank for telling that story. So now, I got to ask you this next question, because this is a little bit on the personal side. Now, now I know that you and I have been, you know, we... Like we chatted about this on Facebook, mm -hmm. like I made a post about not too long ago about 
this was actually last year. Yeah. Or the, or, I know what you're talking about. So when I'm still domain wrestling, and Sean knows this too. When um, when I was at one of the Steel Domain shows last year, I didn't know what the rules were. So I was filming the match and filming some matches and whatnot. And what and after I got home, you know, I received a message from Golden Idol yep. stating that you know you should take that down because. I didn't know at that point because they have pay a camera person to do the filming and mm -hmm. I didn't know at that point they had signed that TV deal and whatnot. Absolutely. And you kind of explained to me yeah, why I think it's going. I think it's important to know that your intentions weren't hostile by recording it. You wanted people to see all of our matches. You wanted them to come to your YouTube page to see that. And what I explained to you was that's exactly what Steel Domain wants. Them. They want people to watch their TV show and watch their advertising because that's how we generate our money. Mm -hmm. And if you're showing that for free, well, then people can just go watch it on your channel so that none of us get any money for that. And you understood very well. We're very apologetic, handled it like an adult. And you've been back to show since then at Steel Domain, right? Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. And we, I love Steel Domain Wrestling. And we love having you there and the support. And I had a good talk with with um, Ed Hillier about it and with Golden Idol. And I explained where you were coming from, that it wasn't malicious. It was just you thought it was OK because you do it at a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. But you know, every show is different. And yeah. onward and upward. Yeah, and, and you know, and I began to understand that now that each wrestling company or promotion has a different rule. They do. There are some that want their that want you to put their stuff on Facebook and YouTube so more people can see it. Mm -hmm. But some people want everybody going to one site to see this stuff. Yeah, and that's what and you know and I wanna talk about this because this is you know, this is my corner, but I just wanna okay, like perhaps Battleground. Mm -hmm. I went to a recent Battleground show and they told me that, oh, we don't want you filming this and blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, I, okay, then I won't do it. Because they like to do their product and their mm -hmm. stuff and I respect that. Awesome. But, but, they did, they did not tell me about that until they have told this to um, Tim Ellen. Sure. Because they didn't want no, they didn't want to contact me, and I was like, "What the hell? They talking with Tim instead of talking it over with me?" I think some people, I think that's a touchy subject. Yeah. I think one is people don't like confrontation. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Two is in everything in today's day and age, race gets brought into everything. So what if? Just imagine. Mm -hmm. What if? A white guy tells a black guy he can't do something, and word of that spreads. What if some random person standing next to you heard that? Well, that could spread like wildfire. And knowing that that's not your intention, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want that. No. But you know, there's some crazies out there that could take it that way. Mm -hmm. So, would it have been a good idea just to grab you and pull you in a corner and talk to you in private? Probably that's a better idea. But maybe they thought growing through Tim, since you and Tim are cool with each other, maybe they thought that was the best way to, to present that. Yeah. And, and, and I understand what they're, they're coming yep. from and what not, but... You would have rather been told to I rather would have been told. Yep. Because going to somebody else that, you know... Well, you're an adult and you pay to go to the shows and you want that respect. And I just want that respect yep. from wrestlers and we talked about this too. Yep. And I just want wrestlers to respect me. Mm -hmm. For what I do with Michael's corner, and we love it, and that's the reason why I keep doing it because. And you do great. And I, I built this. I built this from the ground up. From the ground up, ever since Kurt Altman. For those of you guys who don't know, Kurt, rest in peace, Kurt. Miss you. 
Kurt Altdahl, oh my god, he was a great guy. I think the one thing sometimes that if it gets you any negative attention from any of the wrestlers is these guys have all gone to wrestling school and go out there and hurting our bodies and doing all that to entertain. And to no fault of your own, sometimes you're more entertaining sitting in the crowd than we are in the ring. Sometimes you've got the whole crowd laughing at you and chanting with you and yelling at you. And we're like, well, that's what we're trying to do, you know? So sometimes, and I've learned to deal with it, right? Other guys yeah. don't have the same temperament, don't know how to deal with it. They think you're stealing their spot. Right? Yeah. Right? But here's my opinion. It's the same opinion companies like AEW have. For the fans. If you are buying a ticket, if you are not breaking any laws, you sit and you do whatever the hell you want. And you better have a freaking blast doing it. That's why I step in the ring and do what I do. Yeah, and thank you for, you know, talking to this subject because, because, you know, I want my audience to see that you and I have been friends for many, many years. So oh, we talk I, a lot. Whenever there's an issue, I like that you message me and just ask what my opinion is, and we always seem to come to an agreement. Yep. So, so my next question to you, my friend, is if it were up to you, who do you want to face next if it were up to you? In the Minnesota Indies or period? Just period. Boy, that's good. I think one of my favorite singles matches ever was with Colt Cabana. I'd like to wrestle him again. I still think to this day you could put that match on any DVD and it would be very popular. If I was to have one... That's a really good one. I would really, really like to wrestle Sima. He's a wrestler from Japan and China. Mm -hmm. I think... Hold that thought. If I got in better shape, Christopher Daniels, the fall Yeah, angel. and also, let me cut you there. You know who I would like to see you face? Who's that? I want to see you face Eric Lockhart. I would it's love... Happened. It did? Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen it. It did not get on tape, so I'll tell you what. I will reach out to some promoters and see if I can make that happen. Me I Eric would Lockhart. love to see you face... Sean would love to see you. What about Aaron and Darren against the Lockhart brothers? Holy shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're, they wrestle a lot down in Texas for Booker T's company. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and they also wrestle down there in Florida for WXW, I believe. If I can get a promoter to do it, here's what I will try to do for you, for you two. The Corbins against the Lockhart brothers with their manager, Shane Lockhart. And I will film the match. Yes. And it's going to go right on YouTube. So... Okay, well, before we go, you guys, Aaron Corbin, where can fans follow you on social media? So on Twitter, it is the Aaron Corbin, T H E E, and then Aaron Corbin. On Instagram, it is MN Corbin, and on Facebook, just look up Aaron Corbin, and I'm on all of those places. And my other job where I sell cars, I post all that stuff on there too. So check me out. Make sure you keep checking Michael out. Wrestling needs fans like him. Yeah, and you guys, that will be that does it for this episode of Like This Corner. You can also follow me on Facebook at Michael Mo, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, MK Chess Mike. So black Mike. Yep, yep. Everything is lowercase, and um, um, take care, you guys, and. I'll see you guys in the next episode.